The Chernobyl nuclear disaster of April 1986 has a notorious legacy as one of the most profoundly haunting and harrowing events in human history. While it might not be objectively the world's worst man-made disaster, the dire radiation spread that left 1,000 square miles of Ukrainian land uninhabitable became so ingrained in popular culture as having a borderline ghostly and existential quality to it. It was an event that man had never seen before, and left the planet with a permanent scar that reminds us to this very day of how fragile our lives really are, with the abandoned city of Pripyat and the encompassing exclusion zone symbolising not a what if, but what can happen when a single button press unleashes an agonising invisible danger with the power to wipe out our entire existence. So take it to the guy who wrote the Hangover sequels to tell us all about it. Let's talk about Chernobyl. For the record, I'm not going to indulge on regurgitating the events so much as discuss the tonality of Chernobyl at both vividly and horrifically exploring our humanity, and how decades of war, political divide and social unrest manifested a world of intense self-defense and caution towards exposing anything that might make them seem vulnerable to the outside enemy. For the purists out there interested in the deep historical aspects of Chernobyl, I highly recommend the accompanying podcast on each of the five episodes where writer and creator Craig Mason explains the true facts and how he moulded events for dramatization purposes without compromising on the actuality of what really happened. Chernobyl ignites an immediate sense of dread that's never alleviated, and to this day has never been alleviated either, and that's not just in response to the absolutely fucked up spectacle of radiation burns and human deterioration, as you see the literal life force drain from characters in seconds, or as the plot which starts directly following the core reactor explosion shows, just how a mere glance into the depths of hell absorbs any time you think you might have left in this world. The most precious resource to every character in the story is time, and that's the one thing that's immediately stripped away from them. Yet the very opening of the show doesn't mask the human evil behind the events. Jared Harris maintains a perpetually anxious and frightened performance, as his efforts to stop the further spread of radiation is met with constant suspicion by potential spies, the KGB, and the Soviet government, who would much rather contain the spread of information than radiation of all things. The brooding tension isn't just sustained through the physical toxic atmosphere, but the toxic conditions of a society paranoid about looking weak following their involvement in the Second World War. It doesn't so much linger on trying to be a by-the-numbers spoon-fed account of post-war Soviet Union. That oppression is conveyed purely through atmosphere, where seeing the looming smoke in the distance feels like this monster that's unleashed death into the world. You could say the Chernobyl disaster itself is a metaphor for Soviet society at the time. Their efforts to portray their nation as peaceful and harmonious is completely unshelled by the greed and hypocrisy of maintaining literal power to outshine their neighbouring countries. The show gives us this image of a genuinely happy city of people who truly love their country, and then juxtaposes it with the intense pressure of trying to suppress even just the smallest fragment of an issue. It puts across this idealistic society, but it's one that lives under the invisible shadow of the government's aggressively watchful eye. In fact, one of the most shocking aspects of the show is not the radiation, but just how much denial those responsible for the disaster are in. I mean, who would have thought the dad from Friday Night Dinner would be such a raging asshole, constantly calling his inferiors delusional and hysterical when they try to warn him of what's happened? They actually send a frightened worker by a implied force to the roof to look right into the core, to which he turns round with a dead expression that he knows that he's just lost everything. It is uncompromisingly bleak to say the least. It's that unnerving awareness of their own mortality where it's too late to change anything. They've somewhat accepted their fate, but that doesn't mean they don't just emotionally break down over how much suffering they're about to endure. 
again, it constantly plays on the juxtaposition between those that know what's going on and those that don't, like seeing firefighters have no idea what they're walking into, with one guy picking up a piece of graphite from the reactor only for it to burn right through his gloves onto his hands minutes later. The show masterfully puts across just how bone chilling it is that you can't see the radiation or truly comprehend how quick it'll burn through your flesh and organs, along with the ominous glow that penetrates into the air as innocent civilians look in awe rather than shock, not realising their distance doesn't make them safe, in fact, they're already dead, they just don't know it yet. From there, the mood becomes conveyed through this complex relationship between Jared Harris and Stalin Skarsgård, the latter of whom starts out as a potential antagonist to Harris by showing no concern for Harris's character's supposed hyperbolic fear-mongering, but goes through such a compelling transformation as Harris walks him through the dreadful effects of radiation without having to actually show him anything physical to convey the idea, to which he soon understands how everything he once believed as a bureaucrat is completely untrue. I actually think the best scene to demonstrate this transformation is when Skarsgård comes into a hotel room to inform Harris's character that things are going smoothly before Harris drops this bombshell that both of them are probably only going to live for another five years or so, showing us Skarsgård's reaction shifting subtly from anger over being undermined to pure fear in such a painful human realisation that seals his fate to win an Emmy. Lies becomes the villain of the story. It's one thing that the government pushes across propaganda that everything is okay, it's another when it takes one person to die before they start evacuation containment and, in one specific example, they lie about the magnitude of the radiation levels to Germany who are building them a robot to help remove graphite from the roof, but because the radiation level was actually monumentally higher, the robot is instantly vaporised to Skarsgård's second Emmy moment dismay. Because of the government's desperation to protect their country's image, they force more people into danger unnecessarily, having to use bio-robots as Harris's character puts it, which sees men get conscripted to go onto the roof with only 90 seconds to remove as much graphite as they can by hand before they hit fatal levels, presenting it as one agonizingly long 90 second take that seems to go on forever, giving us a real taste of the panic, fear, bewilderment and disorientation these people experienced. And worst of all, in every case, it never ends well. When their leader tells them they're done, there are two ways you can interpret that. Of course, I'm not going to sit and just tell you all the scary shit that happens because, well, the entire thing is scary. Even scenes that don't involve radiation or being on site at Chernobyl are still scary. But sticking to the thematic angle of the storytelling, there's such a brisk pace to events where terrifying moments seem to last a lifetime rather than just a couple of minutes, while in another scene, a character looks like they're recovering, but in the next scene, nah mate, you're fucked. When I said time was precious, it's those small, intimate moments that sell the true horror of Chernobyl. We know what's going to happen, but we're never prepared for it. The existential nature of it is just how something as simple as a Geiger counter can become the most menacing sign when it distorts to the point that you feel like your insides are being ripped out as someone screams dead into your ear. Take this problem where, because the supervisor told his men to fill the reactor with water, they need to send three men into the building to release said water because it could cause an explosion that could wipe out the entire country, never mind the entire town. But for how scary it is to see these men enter the dark belly of the beast, there is a palpable sense of heroism that brings, I suppose you could say, a mild positive energy to things amidst all the morbidity. They ask President Gorbachev for permission to kill three men, to which those that volunteer do so not because they're being rewarded with something that's honestly not all that much given their life expectancy would be about a week anyway, but because they truly care about their country and the people within it, like I said earlier. They're so feverishly patriotic and willing to make a noble sacrifice that it challenges the falsehood of a lot of today's supposed patriotism. One commander even willingly goes to get the true radiation level Levels, despite being told that the lead shielding probably won't be enough to protect him, but he does so because he doesn't want to shamelessly waste the lives of his own men. 
it's incredibly touching to see this amongst the sea of people refusing to take responsibility, and there is an honest camaraderie between those who serve to stop a threat to humanity, brought to life in an episode that's all about shooting dogs. Yeah, that's the real tragedy of the piece. Chernobyl doesn't just aim to portray itself in a way that emphasises the terrifying qualities of radiation exposure for television shock factor, but instead it wants to accentuate the overarching tragedy that human fallibility, mismanagement, negligence and unawareness can cause. This wasn't about just showcasing the events, but revealing how the truth will always find a way to emerge from distortion and manipulation, and how the most harmful thing out there wasn't just the radiation, but the people that continue to turn a blind eye to the very thing that would eventually cause their downfall. Chernobyl is a horror about action, or I guess more appropriately, inaction. It speaks about how we fester a culture of ignorance and deceit to control a path that isn't for the betterment of those around us, but simply for our own self-preservation. Hey folks, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts on Chernobyl in the comments below, and also let me know your favourite uh, radiation nuclear style narrative. Um, it might be something like the Metro uh, video game series, or the books even, or it could be something like uh, The Hills of Eyes, who knows. Uh, I actually have a video on that coming quite soon, believe it or not. Um, and if you enjoy this show, and you enjoy what I do here, uh, please do consider uh, heading over to Patreon, where for just a few dollars a month you can get early access, you can vote on what the next video could be, um, you can even get your name in the credits, and access an exclusive Discord chat where you can share your own work, you can tell me what you've been watching, playing, reading, recommend, all sorts of uh, crazy things I may not have covered or heard of, uh, so please consider that, and until next time, uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, stay safe, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.